Welcome everyone to the OTRS Central WWE Money in the Bank 2017 Q&A video. That was a mouthful. Thanks to those of you that went to Twitter. At OTRS Central is the Twitter handle. You need to follow. Follow. Follow now. That's what you need to do. And then for this channel, guess what you need to do? Hashtag subscribe or die. Because in 2017, it's true. It's all about hashtag make wrestling fun again. Period. Anyways, again, thanks for those of you that submitted your questions. Hopefully they'll be good. We'll see. With that said, as I was typing this up on the Word document, I uh, forgot to put it on there who asked the question, so feel free to shout yourself out if you have a great question. And if I crap on your question, uh, then kind of slink off into the distance and come back and try again another time. Uh, let's get started, though. Uh, first question, who botched more moves, Sinkar or Kofi Kingston? <laughs> See, here's the difference. Kofi Kingston in his singles run, it felt like once you got the Kofi botch out of the way, everything was all good. You know, it almost became a part of his work, a part of his matches. To me, a part of the appeal. If and when, and usually just when, the Kofi Kingston botch was going to come, how was it going to come? When was it going to come? Why was it going to come? And how bad was it going to be? And then we could move on and have a decent match. But Sin Cara, man, he was terrible. Remember we were pumped up about Mystico coming to WWE? Holy Christ, you want to talk about one of the epic all-time flops, my goodness. I mean, this dude, not only would he botch, he'd injure himself. And not even botch. <laughs> he was one survivor, Sreezy Taurus, Patella Ted, then one another time he had to stop a match with ADR because he hurt his fucking hand or fingers, some shit. <laughs> Every time he turned around, this dude was fucked up. He was god-awful. So I gotta go with Sin Cara, because when he botched, man, it was bad. It was bad. Uh, next question. Do you agree with Stone Cold for saying WWE is not booking Nakamura well? They just made him another guy. Honestly, have not watched enough of SmackDown to make a full judgment on this. I really haven't. Um, with that said, a couple of things. Number one, no shit. Number two, no surprise. Number three, I could have told you that was going to fucking happen. I, I just think not for you for asking the question, but in general, if I said some shit like this, I'd get crapped on. Stone Cold says it. Oh my God, he said it. It's got to be the truth. Give me a beer. I'm sure they're not booking them well. They're probably doing some dumb shit with him because that's what the WWE does. So, why would anybody be surprised? Next, if the Money in the Bank concept existed in the Hogan era, what six guys would you put in the match at a Mania to sell the idea and get it over? That is an excellent, excellent question. Six guys from the Hogan era of the 80s that I would put into that match to really get that concept over. I'd have to go... Macho Man, Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, Bret Hart, Dynamite Kid, British Bulldog would probably be the six. Macho Man, of course, would have to be the winner. But yeah, think about that. Macho Man, Mr. Perfect, Rick Rude, yeah, Bret Hart, Dynamite Kid, British Bulldog. That would be a fucking Money in the Bank ladder match for the ages, if I do say so myself. Uh, next question. Favorite or best Money in the Bank ladder match? <sighs> Confession. I'm getting old. This shit that I used to remember at the drop of a hat, I just don't anymore. So sometimes it's tough when I get questions like this. Because if I don't think about them ahead of time and I don't prepare for them ahead of time, I really don't have a good answer. So it happens when you get old, kids. And no, losing your hair is not that. As you can clearly see, even as the light outlines, there is still quite a bit there, bitches. Closer to 40 than 30. Those of you who are 26 wish you had my hair like yes. And that's not just for the fellas, too. Some of you ladies, too, damn it. With your freaking widow's peak and all that. Ain't that right, Chase? Um... So I don't know if I have a favorite or best Money in the Bank ladder match that I could think of. I would maybe harken back to the first one because it was the first one. But really don't hold me to that answer. 
Uh, next question, how would you book a money in the bank briefcase holder? That's really a vague question because I think a lot of that depends on who the money in the bank briefcase holder is. One thing I would not do is book them to consistently lose and put them in bad situations that kill some of the shine off of them. But without having a specific name, a specific character in mind, it's really hard to say how I would book a Money in the Bank briefcase holder, personally. Uh, why does WWE have a habit of making their Money in the Bank winners lose until they cash in? Here's a, here's a question that ties right into the last one. Um, I think it's one of these things where the WWE figures, well, we've already put the Money in the Bank briefcase on them, so the fans are already going to believe that this guy's going to be a future world champion. Therefore, that automatically elevates him to the profile of being world championship material. Therefore, we don't need to bury other people along the way. We should elevate other people. It's not going to hurt the Money in the Bank winner, and it's going to end up helping these guys. But of course, because the WWE are morons, it does the exact opposite. It doesn't help the guys that win, and it most certainly doesn't help the guy with the Money in the Bank briefcase always fucking lose it. I'm not an advocate of every single match when you're building them up, a person's got to win. Because to me, that's just not real life. That's just not realistic. You know, everybody's got to lose at some point in time. Unless you're Floyd Money Mayweather and you fight a defensive style and you face uh, limited competition throughout your career, then in theory, you could go 49 and soon to be 50 and 0. Um, but this whole concept of we put the briefcase on them and they lose every single pay-per-view match and most of their television matches, I just think is ridiculous because you are killing their momentum. You're sabotaging it for no real good reason. And then you're wondering when they do cash in, once you get past the initial pop of them win cashing in and winning the championship, then you wonder why their title reigns really don't take off. In, despite, you know, all the things that WWE does with their writing and creative processes to screw up guys and undercut guys after the fact, you know, it's hard to take a guy seriously when he's talking about, oh, I'm going to be a future world champion and he loses every damn match. Then when he does become a world champion, how the hell are you going to take this guy seriously? He's no real threat. Well, if he lost all of these matches before he got the championship, why the hell wouldn't I think he's a threat to lose every single time when he does have the championship? All of a sudden he gets the title and he's going to be so much better? Bullshit. Just not believable. It's a dumb habit that has been created by people that don't understand wrestling and don't understand just basic common sense, frankly. And it's frustrating. If Nikki Bella is a surprise six athlete into the women's Money in the Bank match and ends up winning, how many fucks would you not give? I would give absolutely 100% zero fucking fucks. I mean, you do have Cena coming back right around the corner July 4th, so it would make sense that she would be the sixth person. But again, like I talked about in the Money in the Bank preview, which you should be watching, damn it, if you haven't already, the simple fact of the matter is, is the only option to me to win that match has to be Asuka. And you could have her win the briefcase, show up on Tuesday night on SmackDown, and then have her be down at NXT for a little bit. She doesn't have to be on every week. And in fact... I don't think the Money in the Bank winner should be on TV every single week because, if anything, it makes them feel like everybody else. You should make the Money in the Bank winner feel like a special attraction. Only appears every two or three weeks, and when they do, sometimes there's a tease of something, sometimes there's not, sometimes there's just a reminder of the tease of what they could do. But Nikki Bella winning it would be straight fucking trash, and frankly, any of the other five women winning it in that match is straight trash. The one and only option they have at this point in time is Asuka, period. Now, ultimately, they will screw her up, too, because that's what they do. That's what they do. But it is, again, the only real option you have. Um, next question. Would a Raw and SmackDown Money in the Bank match work at Mania? No, because it is WrestleMania, not Money in the Bank Mania. One match with four from Raw, four, four from SmackDown? Yes, that will work. Because I still feel like the Money in the Bank ladder match should be a WrestleMania match, not its own pay-per-view concept. That's just me. It's one of those things that even if the match isn't like five-star super classic, it's hard to have a shitty Money in the Bank ladder match. And it feels like a big deal. And it is something over a very important thing at your biggest show of the year. I think it's a natural fit. So if you took four from Raw, four from SmackDown, put eight of them in the Money in the Bank match at Mania, I'd be a huge fan of that. Uh, each brand having its own, no, that's overkill, and it's counterproductive. 
Um, should the Money in the Bank winner be a free agent? I believe so. Even though I understand it's on SmackDown, you've got the brand split. I don't see why they shouldn't at this point, because frankly, who gives a shit? You know, when we talk about continuity, what the hell does this company care about continuity any damn ways? I don't think there'd be anything wrong with a person showing up on SmackDown one week as a Money in the Bank winner, the next week on Raw as a Money in the Bank winner. That way you're appealing to two slightly different audiences on two different shows, and you're keeping that character somewhat fresh while keeping them exposed at the same time. So if for any other reason than that, I'd love to see him have that where your Money in the Bank winner could be a free agent because you could have them on both of the shows, see kind of where the better natural fit is, and figure out your plans accordingly. Um, next question, has WWE overdone ladder matches? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But I, I don't feel like super strongly passionate about it to where I will rage in the cage or say penis in Uranus or anything like that. Um, let's see here, what do we got? Why is Money in the Bank a SmackDown only pay-per-view? Is that so Kofi can give us our OMG moment? You know, I, I believe this question actually came from Mr. Route. And only Mr. Route would pay so much attention to SmackDown to where he asked a question about Money in the Bank and directly references Kofi Kingston, who of course is not in the SmackDown Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I really don't know, honestly, Mikey, why Money in the Bank is a SmackDown-only pay-per-view. It probably feels like, you know, if there was going to be a fifth one where the brands united, that should be one. Um, but I don't know. Again, I just don't know that it needs to be its own pay-per-view concept. Or maybe you could rotate it. One year it's Raw and the next year it's SmackDown. I would be okay with that. Uh, <laughs> but maybe Kofi should just randomly come to the match, give us the oh my god moment and fucking leave. That would be awesome. <laughs> who was the best briefcase holder and who was the worst? The worst was Jack Swagger. Why? Because what's Jack Swagger? It took that long to unhook the fucking briefcase. That's all you need to know. Period. Nobody will ever be worse. Who was the best briefcase holder? Probably Edge. Yeah, the first one was probably the best one. Uh, yeah, I'll stand by that. I'll, I'll stand by that. Do you think Money in the Bank should be at Mania instead of its own pay-per-view? I've answered this one already. My, my answer is yes. I understand where Money in the Bank kind of serves as a new age kind of King of the Ring concept pay-per-view. Uh, but frankly, I would be a fan of them reinstituting the King of the Ring pay-per-view, especially with how much uh, they sit there and make their shows about in-ring performances at this point, how, how wrestling heavy the shows actually are. It would make sense to fill some of those shows in the build-up to a pay-per-view with a bunch of qualifying matches to get to King of the Ring and have your uh, final eight or 16 face off. I'd be okay with that. Um, but yes, I would prefer to see Money in the Bank as part of Mania, not its own separate pay-per-view. And then the last question, do you think WWE will have a women's Money in the Bank match every year? I believe so. If you're going to have these women on the roster, if you're going to have them, then use them. And if you're going to have this pay-per-view concept, then it only makes sense to have the women in there too. Let the feminazis and the equality cucks sit there and have their moment. Oh my god, the girls can do it too. Hooray. And you know what? Hooray for them. Hooray for them. Why not go out there and bust your ass and do a bunch of dumb spots as opposed to maybe making uh, multiple times the amount of money you do to not have to take any of those bumps by being a valet or a manager or something else. Oh, what do I know? I'm just a wrestling fan, right? Sorry, Mr. Rout, that was gimmick infringement. I do apologize. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to, unless it goes over like a lead balloon, a complete fart in church, we're going to have a women's money in the bank ladder match every year. And if they do, and it's going to be its own pay-per-view concept, you're probably going to need two of those matches. It's a natural fit. It makes sense to have two of them especially because it would be slightly different from the guys because it wouldn't make as much sense to have two uh, Money in the Bank matches on the same show with guys. So one girls, one guys. I'm cool with that. Anyways, thanks to so those of you, again, that went to at OTRS Central, which is the Twitter handle. What's the Twitter handle? You said at OTRS Central. What's the Twitter handle? Motherfucker, open your ears at OTRS Central. Follow the show. And if you haven't subscribed already to this God blessed channel, help Make wrestling fun again and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hashtag subscribe or die. I'll see you later.